Uh, well, thank you for your presentation. Um, just so for the interview, could you just tell us um, who you are and your, your main role and where you're from? Yes, OK. My name is Louise Morley and I'm a Professor of Education and Director of the Centre for Higher Education and Equity Research, CHEER, at the University of Sussex, UK. There's um, an awful lot of content in there that we could pick on, mm. but one of the things you, you were uh, emphasising was the idea of now universities built mm. on yesterday's foundation. Yes. What exactly do you mean by that? Okay, well there's been a lot of pressure uh, to modernise, to speed up, to be more responsive, innovative, uh, to be much more concerned with the needs of the economy, with gen wealth generation, wealth creation, uh, with uh, industry and um, new ideas and um, look, looking at ways in which the university can work more closely with a wider range of partners. So there's been a kind of opening up of higher education in that sense and it's much more overtly harnessed to the needs of the economy. And uh, we're assessed, we're audited, uh, we've been made much more accountable uh, for pu the public funding that, uh, that, it, that, that's, that it uses. So there's been a general speeding up of higher education, but that has been factored in or layered on a whole lot of very traditional ways of working. And some of the areas that I chose to talk about today, particularly, were around gender inequalities. Uh, we're still way behind many other institutions in terms of women at the top. <laughs> uh, there's still uh, horizon well, horizontal and vertical seg segregation. So there, there's a, a, women are not distributed across a whole range of different uh, academic disciplines that are very uh, absent from the high earning science and technology and <laughs> engineering and uh, maths uh, d domains. So there are still a lot of areas that are, 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 are from the past uh, which we're not really giving much attention to. And the more speeded up we get, the more those, those areas get excluded because they're seen as kind of drag factors and they're much more urgent uh, sets of business we have to address. It does make us think now about the, the problems we have and what we'd like the future landscape of higher education to yes. be. Yes. Um, if you was given your, you know, your choice, mm. what kind of landscape would you like to see higher yes. education have in the future here in the UK? Well, I think I, I tried to outline that at the, in my last slide, that I think we have to recapture critical knowledge uh, and not just be positioned as a delivery agency for state policies. Uh, we, you know, we, we have to keep some kind of public intellectual critical space and be think tanks um, and uh, occupy some quite difficult terrains in terms of uh, um, analysis, giving analysis. I also think we have to use a much broader a set of vocabularies. I think we're getting very stale, we're getting very tired. Uh, I mean, I go to an awful lot of conferences where you just hear the same discourses, recycle, reproduce, peddled all the time. And they're very reductive, they're very deadening, they're very stultifying. Uh, stuff like teaching and learning. Um, given the fact that teaching and learning is supposed to be about inspiration, <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the, the discourses describing it often are anything but inspirational. So, <laughs> so we need, I think we need to enliven the debates uh, and not just stick within the discourses that have been dictated to us, but to try and think laterally and creatively uh, new ways of, uh, the, the, our new visions for the, for the future. Visions mm. um, are, are achieved in many ways yes. and one of them is policy mm -hmm. and there's government policy and institutional policies and so on to achieve your vision mm. what steps do we need to put in place to try and move towards that and mm -hmm. you know bear in mind we may have anyone seeing this from a postgraduate student through to mm. uh, government officials and that. well there's a currently a culture of closure yeah uh, we had uh, decades of widening participation now we're, we're being told that we've got to divert people's aspirations back into vocational education or even working in mcdonald's so we were told uh, if you can't get into higher education get some work experience anywhere so there's a, a lot of disquiet at the moment i think in the consumer group 
uh, people who've been told to desire higher education, have been worked on and who have had all their uh, aspirations raised are now being told there are, no, there are insufficient places. So I think we're at quite a crisis point in terms of going backwards to a very elite exclusionary uh, higher education sector. So that's my dystopic vision for the future, that we're just going to go backwards. Um, and that we will have, uh, that, that there will just be the capture of the middle classes, universities, particularly those with uh, the moneyed middle classes. So that's the dystopic v vision, um, and I, that's the one I'm f I fear <laughs> that, that we're, we're going towards. But my vision is we've got to open up some more discursive space for looking at social identities, and we've got to be much more sophisticated about it. Uh, because, I, as I said, I do quite a lot of international work and what tends to happen is that national uh, policies tend to focus, if they look at inequalities, they tend to focus on one at a time. So a lot of sub-Saharan African countries put all their efforts into gender, getting more women into science. That's gender equality. Here, a lot of our efforts have been around socioeconomic status. It, it's rare to have the different structures of inequality intersected. So people don't look at um, working class women, or working class older women, or working class black students, etc. It's just one at a time, which is very prosaic, very pedestrian. So I think we have to open up our analysis, our conceptual framing of equalities in, in policy and think much more in terms of intersections. I also think um, we need to move beyond just quantitative indicators of change. So for many countries, if you ask them about their equality uh, successes, they will quote you the statistics. Now those are important, they are important, but they're not an end in themselves. So yes, we have to get more people in, but that's not equality. We actually have to look at the, the quality of the service that's being provided. So it's not a question of getting more women into science if science completely ignores gender. There's, there's a lot of issues to address, and like you say, yes. it's not just the quantitative no. ones. It, it does make us think about how discriminatory we may have been in the past. Yes. Um, but um, is it true to think about this, that no matter what we address, we'll always find discrimination Yes, somewhere. sure. Um, the future university, perhaps, do you see it being discriminatory against people who are not as ICT literate as others? Do you think that's the, the next kind of challenge? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, there is a, there's an assumption about uh, uh, the sort of digital economy uh, in, in everything to do with higher education. It assumes that people have access, that they're, uh, they're happily engaged with it, and that there's a mass of literature emerging on the digital economy in higher education. I don't think that's so much the problem. I think that's a surface level problem, the digital divide. I think that's the whole digitization debate is much more complex and multifaceted. Uh, it, as I said in the lecture, it can be an inroad for a lot of privatization, for a lot of private sector values, um, for a, a lot of corporatization of higher education. So we are being privatized without really knowing it. In, in many cases. So I think it's multi-tiered. We need to look at it in much more depth than just looking at who has access to uh, the digitization and who doesn't. The very last question yes. got is about a message and an impact yes. to some extent. Um, there may be people watching this in who have not seen your lecture in a variety <coughs> of places, but if there's one idea or one key thought you could leave them with, um, what would that be? All right. Well, I think, as I said to you before, we need to think differently. We need new vocabularies. Uh, we need to get the sociology back into the analysis so that we don't reduce higher education just to an economic unit that's linked purely to wealth creation. We need to look at areas like wealth distribution. Uh, we need to look at the role that higher education can play in uh, developing and promoting uh, equalities rather than um, often obstructing them or reproducing privilege 